just imagine yourself waking up in your private cabin that is floating a thousand feet above the wilderness of Amazon or the vast expanse of ice and snow of the Arctic or the heather covered tranquil moorlands of Scotland. In your comfortable space, you soak the scenic visuals through the floor to ceiling full length windows. You drift across at a leisurely pace with comfort never experienced before. There is no noise, no buffeting of waves, no track induced rocking motion, just the smoothest of glide. The views are not fleeting but lasting. There's only one aerial vehicle that is capable of producing that kind of travel magic. It is the airship and the luxurious travel that we have spoken about is closer than you think. Thanks to engineering and modern day materials, airships are making a comeback and more importantly, airships will traverse the sky without pumping out tons of greenhouse gases. In fact, complete electric airships that are solar powered are being tested as we speak. The technology advancements that are helping them in their resurgence will be the subject of this video. We will also reveal the details of airship cruises towards the end of this video that are planned to start in the year 2023. On this channel Electric Aviation, we aim to bring for you all the latest developments in sustainable travel. Subscribe today to get all of our latest updates. With the word airship, the first image that comes to mind is that of the Hindenburg disaster. But even before that, hydrogen-based airships had started gathering a bad reputation. The technology of the time made them vulnerable. So they did disappear out of sight, but contrary to the popular belief, they did not cease to exist. Having long endurance flight times, they were used for submarine detection by the US for many years. But the only familiar visual in our time of an airship is that of the Goodyear blimp, which is used for advertising purposes and for capturing aerial views in sporting events. Therefore, we can safely say that for a long time, airships haven't been used for transportation of goods and passengers. This all is about to change. Airships are making a comeback. Thanks to material technology and electric propulsion, this time they may be here to stay. And it's not because of their endurance, speed or payload capacity. It's mainly because of the sustainability they can bring to the transport sector. The new breed of airships will be used for a variety of missions, from passenger and freight transport to upper atmosphere exploration, mineral surveys, marine surveillance, disaster relief, and even bringing internet to remote regions of the world. And yes, they will also be used for luxury sky cruises that are low emission, as mentioned at the start of the video. Furthermore, a very unique application is also being proposed that is transporting hydrogen to places where it could be used as a fuel. For now, it is the freight transport, particularly in remote areas that have no land or air transport infrastructure, that has attracted a lot of interest and generated funds for development. For example, to extract timber from hard to reach forest areas, a company by the name of Flying Whales is developing the airship, the LCA T60T, that has a payload capacity of 60 tons. This airship's ability to carry very large, heavy loads and to perform load exchanges while hovering over a remote delivery site open a much broader market opportunity to help solve complex logistics issues in many landlocked and underdeveloped regions around the world. It should be noted that the cost of operating an airship is much lower than that of helicopters and aeroplanes. Let's have a look at the technological improvements that are helping to bring back the airships. First, there is the carbon fiber lattice structure for more rigid and lightweight airframe and gondola. The second advancement is in the new airship fabric material. Multi-layered mylar and biaxially oriented PET fabric is being used that takes care of the high diffusivity of helium and hydrogen. In the old airships, there were two separate materials used. First was the bladder that held the hydrogen and helium and was made out of polyurethane and then there was the cotton fabric for the outer envelope. The cotton fabric was lighter but would gather charge and also caught fire during the Hindenburg disaster. By comparison, the New Age airships use materials that not only maintain pressure over a long time 
by not allowing helium to permeate through its fabric and scape, but are also insulating both thermally and electrically. They use a thin layer of polyamide for eliminating the buildup of atmospheric charge. One thing airships do have is a large surface area. This is of great advantage for using flexible thin film solar panels that can double up as the fabric of the outer envelope. The Chinese blimp called Yuan Meng is one example of this. It has successfully floated at 65,000 feet for 22 hours. By soaring above the clouds, a certain level of constant solar power can be expected during the daytime, which can be used to power the airship. The next factor aiding the development of modern airships is the electric propulsion which ties in nicely with the solar panels as discussed above. Electric motors are much lighter than engines of comparable power and much easier to maintain too. Through the use of electrical controls, the need of gearboxes is eliminated which further increases the payload capacity. If the fuel is discounted, then the power to weight ratio of electrical systems is much higher. As for the low energy density of batteries, it is to an extent compensated by the solar panels on the airship. But even in the absence of batteries, modern airships have got around the hurdle of energy requirement by using IC engine as gensets rather than using them for propulsion. The electricity produced by the generator is then fed to various propulsors around the airship. Having several propulsors allows the airship movements to be controlled flexibly and precisely. This way the airship can benefit from all the advantages of electric propulsion while simultaneously taking advantage of the energy density of fossil fuels. Electric propulsion also allows for regeneration of power through the same propulsors located at various points around the airship. They can extract power from the wind when the propulsion system allows for it, for example, during deceleration or when the airship is tethered. The modern airships can reach speed of 90 miles per hour on their propulsion systems alone. This is four times higher than cargo ships. The speed can be further increased by catching the winds in the jet stream. The jet stream is a band of high speed wind in the mid latitudes, predominantly in a west to east direction. The average wind speed of 165 kilometers per hour or 102 miles per hour has been recorded in the jet stream. Many of the modern airships are hybrid airships. This means only part of their lift comes from buoyancy of lifting gas. The remaining part of the lift comes either from the aerodynamic lift or thrust vectoring. This makes the size of the modern airship much smaller compared to their older counterparts. For example, the hybrid airship, the Airlander, gets 60% of its lift from buoyancy and the remaining 40% comes from the aerodynamic lift. It has a unique shaped hull which generates lift. This allows the Airlander 10 to be much smaller in size compared to the Hindenburg class airship. Interestingly, both have the same payload capacity of 10 tons. The Airlander 10 is only 93 meters long, whereas the Hindenburg was 245 meters long. As for the passenger cruises mentioned at the start of the video, they are due to start in the year 2023. Ticket for the Sky Cruise experience that is also being marketed as the Polar Expedition have already reached a price of 234,000 US dollars. It is interesting to note that when the idea was floated a couple of years ago, the ticket price was set at 60,000 US dollars. This goes to show that there is quite an interest in this service. The experience will last 36 hours and the flight will start from Svalbard reaching the North Pole and returning back to Svalbard. We hope that with more airships produced, everyone will be able to afford and enjoy this experience someday. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from the video, please do give it a thumbs up. It helps us to produce more of such content. Thank you for your attention.